you know how you get a Google alert on your name. You all should have a Google alert on your name. <laughs> so one of the articles that I received a Google alert on is from this woman who writes for Medium. She has 10,000 followers on her, I guess it's a, a blog of some sort that she says she, well, it says she writes for newsbreak.com. I guess it's a blog. It's her opinion. But anyway, it's a little interesting. So her name is Lisa Gerard, Lisa S. Gerard, G-E-R-A-R-D. I wanted to show it to you and go over it with you a little bit. I thought it was kind of an interesting look into um, her belief and her why she believes and why she wants to believe a little bit. She's talking about seatbelt psychic Thomas John. So, you know, we talk about him a lot. Let me show you the article and then let's just kind of go through it a little bit at a time and see what she has to say. There's a lot of ads on here. So uh, because it's a blog, so you'll see a bunch of different things that pop up. So this is posted 13 days ago. So that'd be probably, oh, today's December 12th, 2023. So that'd be uh, November 30th or November 29th, probably of 2023 by this writer, Lisa Gerard, And she says, the article's titled, Driver Talks to Dead People, Will Seatbelt Psychic Come to Florida? <laughs> okay, whatever then. So she does have a disclaimer on here. It says, this article is written for informational entertainment purposes only. So, you know, that's a nice disclaimer. Hopefully that's that's there. And she did do some research. There's probably a thousand times more research in this article this blog that this woman wrote who um, is in Florida and has over 10,000 followers than the recent article out by the woman who writing for CNN. Uh, I posted a video, light, nice long video on my channel about. So, so Lisa Gerard does way more research on psychics than <laughs> the CNN people do. So what she's saying here, and I'm going to just paraphrase this a little bit. You, I'll put the link in the description underneath this box of uh, video. You can check it out in a minute. And there's a place to comment if you want, but let's, let's think about it. So what she's talking about is that she's very fascinated with mediumship. She finds it really interesting. And she, um, goes and she watches a lot of these shows. She goes to TikTok a lot and she stumbled across a video about seatbelt psychic. And there's a whole bunch of these videos out there, not necessarily put together by Thomas John, but they're also put out there by people who want to get the hits. So they take a video and then they reformat it, cut it, splice it, add their commentary on it, and then they reformat it so that they get the views. I guess much less what I'm doing right here, except that I'm not getting hardly any views, but <laughs> and almost nothing as far as money. So I think I've had the monetization on this channel has been up since October. I think I'm I think I'm up to thirty dollars, maybe thirty dollars <laughs> on the on the views. <laughs> There's no money in this, trust me. So she says. Okay, so this Lisa person says, I eat these videos up. It's not that I'm 100% convinced of their accuracy, but I want to climb into Uber and see him as my driver. I need to verify his authenticity. Okay, there you go. She says, it looks like I'm not quite alone in my curiosity since he appeared in this newscast. And there was a TV newscast, uh, one of those morning TV shows that Thomas John does, morning news, you know, it's not really news. It's more like, you know, what's the traffic and the weather going to be like? And then they talk about lipstick colors and psychics. And they certainly have no skepticism on there. So it's just feel good morning. Um, she says, according to Lisa, my spidey senses went on high alert the second I followed his account. I was flooded with followers from pictures and names that seemed like him, but with variations of his names. Of his name. Are they posers or is he the chameleon? Multiple requests came through as well. Would you like a reading? So um, this is, I also did a video on this talking about the problem that, well, pretty much everybody has, but these psychics have a huge problem with people cloning their accounts, you know, just 
making a new Facebook page, taking naming it the name of the psychic and put taking photos off of their page and putting them onto the um their account and their account you can block them you can do whatever you can you can argue with these people but i mean it's a law of large numbers they probably do have uh are running you know hundreds of these accounts at any one time and it only takes a couple of people to click on them and get given money so i know you might think you're 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 um, wasting their time by talking to them and arguing with, with these people that are spammers it might be bots. It might be um, AI. I don't know. But clearly you are wasting your time if you try to argue with these these uh, fake accounts. Yeah, because they're fake accounts. Sometimes they are people who have accounts saying they do tarot or they do readings or, or whatever. And they may legitimately be somebody trying to do that. But most of the time it is somebody just trying to get you to move into private messages or direct messages. And then they're immediately are very aggressive in a lot of cases. And even sometimes very vulgar um, talking to you and demanding money and saying that, you know, they're going to put a curse on you or you're going to die or, you know, whatever. And, and being very aggressive. They're after vulnerable people who are going to be intimidated or distracted enough or vulnerable enough or just not so savvy with technology that they're going to um, fall for it. I mean, you put out a thousand of these and you get you know, $30. That's still $30 because in some countries, $30 is a day's wage. So, um, you know, social media can't seem to come to figure out how to deal with this. But anyway, so Lisa says she was immediately when she when she was watching this TikTok video, um, she hit the follow and she just got a ton of spammers just messaging her. So she went and she um she says, My way of life is trust but verify. Trust but verify. I'm not so sure about that. that's a great idea. So what she did, she started on Google. So she did try to do some sort of um, verification she uncovered some concerning information even wikipedia references some prior troubles thomas john has had with his credibility in the past and that's absolutely true make sure you check out the wikipedia page go right to the citations and see what what has been going on with thomas john that you probably didn't realize then immediately here she goes here is where my Google alert came on because she mentions myself and Mark Edward in her post. And she, it's um, Sting Operation. Susan Gerbic and mentalist Mark Edward attended one of Thomas John's shows using aliases. And he read them as a married couple in March of 2017. Thomas John never picked up that they were being deceptive. All of the person information. All of the personal information Thomas John shared with the couple matched the details they supplied on their fake Facebook accounts rather than about their being their actual lives. They referenced this approach as a hot read. And by the way, I took that picture. There I am. Da, da, da. I'm standing right here or I'm standing right here and Mark's standing right there. It's a selfie we took with Thomas John. Funny that it is that he didn't know Thomas John didn't know that it was us. So that's his Facebook page. I mean, this is his uh, um, Wikipedia page. That picture's there. And then she goes on to describe what a hot read is and a cold read is. And then she puts up a TikTok video for this guy, Garrett Lee 496, who is a, you know, many dozens of uh, thousands of followers who had done a video on seatbelt psychic and why it's not real. Really, he just went through and read one of my articles and didn't name me. But uh, at least the information got out there. I was reading the comments. Boy, he got a lot of hate. So Lisa Gerard, the person, the subject of this article, she says, here's the thing. I won't be deleting or blocking the seatbelt psychic. Call me a fool, but the production captivates me. I get my psychic medium fix, real or not. I want to believe, so therefore I will. 
I may never meet a psychic medium, but if I do, I won't turn down the opportunity to hear from the dead people surrounding me. Would you? Are you a believer? Let me know if I'm alone in this journey. Okay. So she does link to Skeptical Inquire, which is where I wrote the article, one of the articles about um, uh, Operation Pizza Roll, which is what she's referencing there. It's also in the New York Times. If you go to my channel, um, susangerbic.org, you will be able to find the archive version of the New York Times article. I'll, I'll just put a link in it in the description of this, this video, just FYI. But um, interesting. I thought it was really interesting. She, she's, it is kind of tongue in cheek. She did her, her research. And like I said, far more than that CNN reporter did. Let's look and see what the comments are. Now there's only seven comments. So it's really kind of, you know, not very popular, but there's seven. Let's, let's, I mean, what do you think would be in there? So here they are. Uh, Stephanie says, I'd love to be in that car. Uh, somebody guest says, super cool to be in his car. Susan Curry says, there are many people who have the ability to talk to the dead. I am one of those. I did readings in Indiana, Indiana, but down here I hide my gift. That's a really interesting one. I have the ability to talk to the dead. I talk to cats. I talk to dogs. I talk to plants. I talk to walls. I talk to, um, you know, appliances in my kitchen, my refrigerator, the TV. I talk to a lot of things, but it doesn't mean that they communicate back, right? Okay, so another thing that the Susan Curry says is that she hides her gifts. And you know what? If I had the ability to communicate with the dead, um, that's a pretty dangerous thing. I don't think I'd be flaunting that anywhere and letting people know, trying to make 50 bucks or even a thousand dollars because you would be in danger of being kidnapped by whatever military needs you. I mean, it just, it, just think about what it would be if you had the ability to be able to communicate with dead people, wouldn't that be super powerful? So Susan, smart woman, her name is Susan. So therefore <laughs> I'm associating with her. She's absolutely right. So we all have the ability to talk to the dead. She says many people, I can talk to the dead. And just they just aren't going to communicate back with me. So somebody named Lisa Linda says I'd love that, and Lisa Gerard said she'd love that too. Uh, John says that'd be an interesting ride, and this one says I'd love it. Oh, wants me to reply. Okay, so so that's the kind of comments that are on there. Just like, I mean, would you really want to do that? Would you really want to communicate with the dead? She says she's never met a psychic medium. Well, hopefully it stays that way. But if I do, I wouldn't turn down the opportunity to hear from the dead people surrounding me. Would you? And that's an interesting question. Would you want to hear from the dead? I mean, it's not like cat's paw. Anybody ever read that? Um, where the dead do come back and they immediately wish her, wish the dead person back away because they're like come out of the dead, you know, and they're zombie like. There's also been many. Um, characters and many stories where they talk about the dead coming back and how they regretted it almost immediately because um for those reasons if i had the ability to contact somebody who and legitimately was actually speaking to my family i would i would love that i do genealogy I spend an awful lot of time wanting to know about my family that I've never met and understand them better. Why did my family immigrate? Uh, from why, what was actually going on in their lives? What was life like for them? Um, and all the different, I mean, there's so much I would like to know about my family's history. And I spent a lot of time looking for documents. And if I could communicate with the dead, it'd be so much easier just to say, so where were you living in 1890? Where, why, you know, <laughs> help me find that document. Did you do this? Did you do that? Where were you working? And of course, I'd find that very fascinating. But more than anything, I've been thinking about this. If I could really communicate with the dead, 
I love Ag Agatha Christie. Absolutely adore Agatha Christie um, mysteries. I find them terrific. Um, it's not a lot of blood and gore. It's it's uh, like the British sensibilities and the way they do things. So if Agatha Christie really could, I could communicate with her. I think she's probably written some real good thrillers and probably some good historical fiction in there as well because of course she's met everybody up there wherever she's at in the dead place and i would really find that fascinating to see what she's up to see what she's written see if you can get a copy of the manuscript or something you know heck i'll publish it for her if she i'll give her full credit and just say that i uh that i got it from her in communication with the dead See if people believe me. But no, that's what I would do. After I've talked to my family and, and friends that have, have have died, I would I've probably talked to some some people from the past too. That would be really interesting too. Oh my gosh. If there is a way of communicating with the dead, I don't think I would be doing anything. I certainly wouldn't be talking to you all unless I was telling you about what I what I found, because I think I would just spend so much of my time trying to find <laughs> learn things. Just what really interesting stuff. What's going on? What's going on over there? Do they wear do they wear um carry harps? Do they float? Do they um uh, you know, what do they eat? Do they eat? You know, what's it like? Can you can you hang out with whoever you want? Um, you know, what's it like? You know I'm being facetious, right? Because <laughs> I hope you guys realize that. Anyway. So this is just one of those articles that appeared in my Google alerts um, while I was off in Australia or New Zealand, and I've been wanting to get to it. And now I'm going to be able to cross this off my list. And I hope you guys enjoy this little conversation with this uh, Lisa Gerard person who has been writing about how much she would love to meet a psychic medium and think she thinks it'd be cool to have him in riding the car. That would have been interesting, wouldn't it? 